All right, let's expand on that idea of uh, different rates of a reaction depending on reactants or products. So last time we looked at A goes to B, let's make it a little bit more complex. Let's say A goes to 2B. Not much more difficult, but a little bit. So now what can we say about these rates? Well, the rate with respect to A is some value. And if we think about that, what what's happening here? So for every A that's consumed, I'm producing two Bs. So the rate with respect to B is really double the rate with respect to A, right? Or the other way we can think about that is the rate with respect to A is half the rate with respect to B, right? Those are the same thing. So this allows us to compare rates for different species in a chemical reaction based on the stoichiometry of that chemical reaction. So to really generalize this up, let's take a look at A of A plus B of B goes to C of C plus D of D. And you can put as many reactants over here and as many products as you want. The relationships are all the same. So these are all related based on the stoichiometry of the reaction. But what do we call the rate of the reaction? So if we're looking at the rate of the reaction, we really want one way to describe it. We don't want to have a rate of a reaction that might be twice what other things are. We want one rate to describe that. So in order to do that, let's look at what we did here. We've got one expression here. So generalizing this, the rate of the reaction that I'm showing here is equal to, let's work our way through. Uh, we saw this with the 2 and the 1 half, 1 over A, and since that's a consumption, we better make that negative, times uh, clean that up, times change in concentration of A over change in time. That is equal to negative 1 over B, change in concentration of B over change in time, which is also equal to 1 over C. Now we're at a rate of production, so we don't need the negative anymore. Change in concentration of C over change in time, which is equal to 1 over D. times the rate with respect to D, which is change in concentration of D over the change in time. So this again gives us a place where as long as we have a balanced chemical equation, we can do a lot with it. And we can look at any of these four species in this case, and we can talk about the rate of a reaction based on the measurement of any one of those because there's always a way to interrelate all of them. So that is what really helps us out when we're talking about the related rates of consumption and production in a chemical reaction.